Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Midway through the last century, a few of mankind's brightest minds got together over lunch to seriously discuss a question which, until then, had been largely relegated to the realm of science fiction. The question was, where is everybody? Asked on a cosmic scale. In a galaxy vast enough to encompass a hundred million black holes and a thousand times that many burning stars, we expect to see some signs of life beyond this little blue dot we stand on. Since that lunchtime chat among physicists, we've extended our reach beyond the solar wind's farthest traces and our sight all the way to our universe's horizon. But despite the staggering biodiversity here on Earth, we have yet to encounter a single piece of evidence that says we aren't alone. So, are we an anomaly? A lonely group of chance biological specimens, alone in a blind and deaf universe of rock and ice and gas? By its definition, an anomaly is unlikely and shouldn't be assumed. But the possible reasons we haven't yet sensed an alien presence range from the terrifying to the sublime. Where are the others, and why can't we find them? The answer would be mankind's most important discovery. And so we search, hoping with each passing decade to observe something that might give us an answer. Docking lock confirmed. Commander Nelson, you're free to move about the cabin and prepare for stasis. Thanks. Oh, uh, NASA, one of my data screens just went fuzzy. Affirmative. We're uploading a revised AI plugin. Last minute bug fixes? That's not very reassuring, NASA. Please don't tell my wife. <laughs> hey, I'm still here. She's the one uploading the plugin. Babe, a year and a half, and I'll be waking up at Titan. Mission Control, we are ready to begin our onboard systems check. Commander Nelson, are you preparing for stasis? Sorry, I'm currently distracted by the view. Abigail, you know, you really should be a little nicer to Becker. Without him... I'd be watching the launch with the rest of the civilians. I know. But sometimes Becker can be such a... Hey, hey, I'm still here. We have a computer confirmation on the Magellan's current trajectory. Nelson, can you give us a manual confirmation of Houston controller sync? In my defense, it's the Chinese who drove this launch timetable, not me. Well, they all wish they hadn't. However, this does seem to be more of a military endeavor now, doesn't it? Friendly competition for science, I've been assured. When will our advance probe reach Titan? Uh, that's classified information. Two days before he does. Thank you, Becker. At least somebody tells me what's going on. Oh, don't you start that, babe. All controller systems check out. We are go from gravity spin in T-minus two minutes. <clears throat> Commander Nelson, are you preparing for stasis? Uh, that's a negative. Currently distracted by the view. I see you staring at rockets in the sky, fire in the liquid. Light. These are the last of them. Thank you. Um, and you. NASA's on the phone? Really? Yeah. Um, um. I need you to hold this. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Roger Nelson speaking. If it's Becker, tell him you can't go. You can't miss yes, life symposium. Yes, sir. No, yes. Tomorrow morning? Yes, sir. You got it, 10 hundred hours? Okay, no, 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 thank you. Becker says you're gonna miss my symposium. It wasn't Becker. I have a briefing. You mean a... A mission briefing. An actual space... Tomorrow morning. <laughs> a mission briefing. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you believe it? Yeah. Hey Nelson, they finally sending you off in the space, man? Uh, it looks like it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh yeah. I sure hope so. Oh. I'm sorry about the symposium. Yeah, well, NASA's in trouble with your wife. Not me. <laughs> oh, man.
Approximately 48 hours ago, SETI reported a radio anomaly picked up by Arecibo, a low frequency pulse repeating at constant intervals. Within minutes, the VLA and Atacama picked it up as well. That's when we started listening. Matthew, can you please play? It's some kind of pulsar. Yeah, that's what we thought initially as well, yes. But it's not on sidereal time. Then SETI reported a second anomaly at a higher radio frequency, and then a third showed up, even higher still. And they've been transmitting constantly ever since. After we picked up the third signal, I realized that the second pulse is exactly four semitones higher in pitch than the first, and the third is exactly seven semitones higher in pitch. Hmm? Play them together. I'm sorry, a second ago you used the word transmitting, not emitting. Yes, yes, yes I did, and for good reason. Do you hear that? That, that sound, Captain Nelson. In musical theory, that is what they call a perfect tonal major triad. It's, it's space music, essentially. The signals are artificial. So you're saying that someone from across the galaxy sent us a song? Based on what we know now? Essentially, yes. That's incredible. <laughs> where are they coming from? That's where it gets interesting. So the computers did the math, and they found out that all the signals are coming from within our solar system. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Captain Nelson, these are local. Yeah, we, we traced the radio signals to three separate points of origin. The first is transmitting from Saturn's moon, Titan. The second from Neptune's moon, Triton. And the third, from the dwarf planet, Eris. Eris. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the signals probably began transmitting at the same time, but Eris and Triton are four, four and a half light hours away. How? I mean... How do we suddenly start getting these signals transmitted to us from all these locations? We don't know. But that's where you come in. Secretary Stewart? The mission will be to fly to each of these locations, discover the exact source of the signals, collect samples, and if possible, the transmitters themselves. We need an astronaut with the right background for the job. And you, Captain Nelson, are a man. Let me get this right. You, you want me to fly a manned mission to Saturn? Actually, we need you to fly a manned mission to Saturn, Neptune, and Eris. Yes, sir. I'm your man. What's the spacecraft? The X-57. But the X-57's not outfitted for deep space. I thought that we're way... It will be in two and a half years. Captain Nelson, these signals, whatever they are, have created quite the buzz in the scientific community and in the DOD as well. What started out as the scientific find of the century has quickly become an issue of national defense. The ideal window for launch would be eight years from now, but there is a less ideal but still manageable window two and a half years from now. And Intel has just come to us that says the Chinese are shooting for that. Okay, so we're racing the Chinese to these unknown transmitters. That's fairly accurate, yes. Most of the space exploration community is behind us on this because we have the infrastructure to pull it off. Between the feds and foreign governments, we have billions of dollars pledged to perfect stasis tech. 
And the Chinese seem to want these things for themselves, whatever they are. Well, of course, I'll do whatever it takes. But if you don't mind me asking, Mr. Secretary, why not just send probes? Well, we are looking into the feasibility of sending an advanced probe to collect survey data. But this mission is too important to trust to remote operation or an AI. Nelson, we're not just asking you to go to some distant rock in the hope of collecting scientific data here. Whatever those things are, it was put there for a reason. We need real-time decision-making, humanity's outstretched hand. We're talking about the real possibility of first contact here, Nelson. We want you to be Earth's ambassador, scientist, investigator, and advanced scout. Yes, sir. What's the mission duration? Well, it's approximately 10 years, but the good news is that you will be in stasis most of the time. Of course, your wife will have to remain here the whole time. Which is why, despite your record as a duty-bound pilot, Becker insisted we give you the option to refuse the assignment. Refuse the greatest discovery since the birth of mankind? No, sir. I'm your man. Don't worry about Abigail. She'll manage. Well, if you're certain, let's continue the briefing. Secretary Stewart's just informed me that the Chinese launch has been delayed for 24 hours due to inclement mm -hmm. weather. I bet Secretary Stewart's happy. Your vital signs check out. You may enter the stasis box when ready. I hate the stasis box. You know how weird it's going to be to be asleep for 18 months and not have a dream? Whatever, you won't even notice. I'm the one who's stuck down here, remember? Right, my apologies, babe. Hey, NASA, did I fail to mention that I hate tight spaces as well? Then you've chosen the wrong job. What do you think you're doing, Roger? You just signed away 10 years of your life. Our lives, my life. What do, what do you expect me to do the whole time you're gone? Tell Becker you can't go. Abigail, I've never even questioned orders, let alone refuse them. And now I get a chance to do something really important. And you want me to tell the Secretary of Defense no? You knew what we were getting into when we signed up for this. You knew. You knew when we got into this. What you signed I, up for. I and thought you, broke, you might you die. Okay with I it. didn't think you'd get shipped across the solar system for 10 years. Well, guess what? What? I still might die. So just like that, because Stuart requests that. You don't have to blindly follow everything they tell you, you know. You could follow your own path. Becker, you'll take care of Abby for me, right? If by taking care of, you mean making sure she can get into mission control anytime she wants, then yes. I'll be fine. You take care of yourself. I will. I'll be careful, Abigail. Besides, that's what I got Ferdinand for, remember? I love you. You better come home, Roger Nelson. You hear me?
Good morning, Commander Nelson. Good morning, Ferdinand. How are you feeling? I'll be feeling a whole lot better once I get these tubes out of my arm. Very good. Please proceed with attaching your health monitors. Thank you. Ferdinand, give me a complete systems report, please. All systems are currently nominal. Number of single event upsets total six, with minor software corruption and zero hardware malfunctions. Software corrected without incident. What's our current position in ETA? We are approximately 8.49 astronomical units from Earth. We will be intersecting Saturn's planetary orbit in less than 24 hours. Good. What are we getting from the advanced probe? It has completed the orbital survey successfully. I am processing the data now. How many dispatches do I have from NASA? 229. How many? 229, sir. And how many of those are designated important? All of them. Are you awake yet? I'm getting desperate. NF3. I'll be here all day. Oh, it's on. I see your F3 and I raise you D5. Hmm. Hey Ferd, what's the transmission time? Hour and 20 minutes? One hour and 14 minutes. But in your wife's time zone on Earth, it's two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Would you like to play a faster game of chess with me? No, thank you. It's the human element that matters here. Besides, I gotta get through all these dispatches before NASA calls. Will you do me a favor, let me know when we pass Saturn's orbital path? Yes, sir. Thank you. F3, really? Here's one, Ferd. Becker forwarded me a video from the CNSA congratulating us on a successful launch. The Chinese government must be pretty mad. Another dispatch states that they have delayed the launch for a year and have announced that they will be on trajectory for Neptune. Hmm. So they're skipping Titan altogether, huh? Interesting. I wonder if that's gonna change our orders. Currently, we are to proceed as ordered. So, do you read all my emails? All transmissions must be sent through our encrypted channel, which the central computer must decode. So, yes. <laughs> Although I'm programmed to ignore any message marked classified. Good to know. Sir, we will reach our trajectory in 10 minutes. All right, Ferb, let's rock and roll. Target will be achieved in one minute. There was a slight overshot in our trajectory curve. NASA recommends we be ready to fire additional retro rockets manually. Do you want me to handle that, or shall Just I? Just make sure the retrogrades are primed, please. Certainly. But I need to confirm that order, please. Uh, confirmed. I'll control manually. Check complete. All systems ready. Entering orbit in 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four. Advise slight adjustment, nose left. Beginning roll maneuver now. Achieved. Stable. We are in orbit around Titan. Taking thrusters offline. Tell me what I'm looking at.
at first. These are images of the northern polar regions of Titan, which is covered by numerous lakes of liquid methane and ethane. The Advanced Probe Survey was able to pinpoint the source of the first signal to within four kilometers near the lake called Punga Mare. So these are the ice flats here? Affirmative. I'm thinking this is going to be our best place to land, assuming that the ground is going to be solid enough. The ground is solid. Surface temperature is approximately negative 178 degrees Celsius. Negative 178, that's it? So I should probably wear a spacesuit for this one? That would be advisable for survival. <laughs> okay, Ferg, got it. Still, four kilometers, that's not a small area to be wandering around on an alien moon. So I'm thinking our best bet's gonna be to land right here in the middle and hopefully get a better beat on the signal. What's our window for Neptune? We have an ideal six hour window, sir. Six hour window. After that, we will have to dip into ion thruster reserve fuel. However, if the land is close enough to the lake here, we can save time on refueling the lander. If I can drop a line in the lake, we won't have to do methane air extraction. Is that feasible, Fern? Yes, as long as impurities remain under 6%. Which we won't know until we land and I get a hose in. However, could save us three to four hours. I say it's worth a shot, Fern, let's do it. What's our entry window for Titan? In 12 minutes. Good. Any change in signal? It is still transmitting at regular intervals. Good, stay on top of it, please. Sir, we have received a video transmission from Mission Control. Okay, throw it up on the main console. Ready? Okay, here we go. Commander Nelson, congratulations on your safe arrival at Titan. It is a landmark in human exploration. Abigail wanted me to congratulate you as well. Uh, I tried to convince her to come down here and talk to you herself, but she's how do I put it? She's uh, she's a little stressed out right now. Some something happened earlier this month, and uh, she's she's really having a bit of a breakdown. Um, she recorded part of a message, and she tried to delete it. But uh, I think you should hear her talking to you honestly. I'll send it to you after you get reconnected with the Magellan. I don't want anything distracting you right now at this critical moment. I, I really shouldn't even be talking to you about this. Sorry. Um, your primary mission is to find out what is sending that signal. Whatever it is, it's there for a reason. And once you've located it, we may just have a clue why. Good luck, Roger. Thanks a lot, Becker. If you shouldn't be talking to me about it, then don't. Stay on task. All right, Ferd, let's go. Engaging docking release. Undocked. Captain Nelson, due to probable data relay issues during landing, I'd like to remind you the X-57 has been equipped with a separate AI named Neil. Neil will engage while the lander is detached. Hello, Commander Nelson. This is Neil. Uh, hello, Neil. I'm sorry I wasn't expecting you to sound so enthusiastic. It's for morale, Commander. For morale. Abigail program you, didn't she? Possibly. Yep, sounds like her. Radio will be experiencing static interruption. Commander, this is Neil. Due to entry velocity and atmospheric conditions, we've temporarily lost radio contact with the Magellan. We are also experiencing some turbulence, but all systems are nominal. Thanks, I guess. Just doing my job, sir. I swear, Abigail. We're coming into the landing area. Now, I need a location of the lake, please. Uh, give me a visual target of the west shoreline. Yeah, right there. Okay, we're coming in too high. We need to slow it down. I'm gonna engage the landing cycle. Engaging. Prime the VTOL thrusters, Neil. Roger that, Commander. Priming VTOLs now. 
We're almost in the target area. Here we go, man. Firing retro thrusters. VTOL engines are primed. Engage VTOLs. Copy that. VTOL engaged. Deploying landing gear now. Landing gear deployed. Stay on target. Nice and easy. There you go. Distance to target, 200 meters. Distance to target, 100 meters. Slow and easy. Slow and easy. 50 meters. 30 meters. 10 meters. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown. We have touchdown on Titan. Yes, we do. Looks like the signal's coming from a northeasterly direction. Which puts me more or less parallel to the shoreline. I'm gonna get a hose in, get some samples, and head out. Copy that, Commander. Sir. Commander, this is Neil. Copy that. Go ahead. Ferdinand is reporting a storm approaching from the east with high winds and significant danger of combustion due to evaporated methane. I'm getting close, Neil. Hang in there. directly from the lake. Well, I wasn't planning on getting wet. Neil, any idea how this suit will stand up to submersion in liquid methane? It's designed to withstand a vacuum of space. So, as long as you don't rupture it, you should be okay. You'll sink much more quickly, but Titan's low gravity should allow you to climb out again easily. Okay. Well, I don't suppose there's any way to uh, get the topography on the lake's floor, see how deep it gets? No, sir. Not from here. <sighs> okay. I guess I'm just gonna take the plunge. Good luck, sir. There we go. Thank you. 
signal's strong. It's really strong. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's really strong, Neil. We're right on top of it. It says I'm right on top of it. I don't see anything. Come on. Neil, I think I found it. have risen enough, we don't want to risk igniting the rocket, sir. Also, the high winds will make a launch extremely dangerous. We'll have to wait until the storm clears before we What? No, 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 no. There's still time, Neil. We can go. Oh, come on. Fine. How long? How long until the storm passes? Unknown, sir. Communications with the Magellan are still out, and I'm receiving no further data from Ferdinand. Right, right. Let's just hope we don't miss our window. Neil, are you picking up any particles, any radiation, anything at all? No, just the radio signal. But mission protocol calls for immediate storage of the object. There's something... of the object are unknown. I must advise you not to... Neil, what was that? I am unsure. The signal was interrupted momentarily while the object responded to your touch. I hope I didn't do anything stupid. We gotta go, Neil. We're out of time. If we miss our launch window, the Magellan won't be back in docking range for another three hours, and we're gonna miss our window to Neptune. The winds have slowed enough. We should be able to make a safe launch, sir. All right, ready the vetoes, Neil? Come on, we're going down.
Welcome back, sir. Our orbital exit window closes in five minutes. Copy that. Prepare to depart Titan's orbit. Take trajectory to Saturn for gravity assist. This is Commander Nelson reporting to Mission Control. I have successfully retrieved the transmitter. I'm back on the Magellan and currently on trajectory to Neptune. I've got something to show you guys. Sit there. So I found this in a few inches of liquid methane in the Pungamar. It has no obvious power source, but a lot of physical properties. I think you hopefully will be able to make it out. And it is most definitely still transmitting. I'm gonna send over a more complete report soon, but um, just thought you'd like to celebrate. Nelson, out. Abigail, I did it. You won't believe what I just found on Titan. Look, NASA's gonna decide when and what to share with you, okay? But I just had to send you this and let you know that, that I did it. I did. And I miss you. And I found the alien transmitter on Titan. Transmission from Mission Control, sir. <clears throat> That's probably from Abigail. Will you throw it up for me, please? So we said? Okay. Congratulations, Commander Nelson, on your discovery. This is truly a historic day. We are all celebrating here, and we eagerly await a full analysis of the object. <laughs> Listen. Please make sure that you follow the procedures outlined in your mission manual for the analysis. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you follow specific protocols. Um, things are getting a little testy here with Secretary Stewart. Um, so please take extreme caution not to taint the object. We look forward to seeing the results of the test. <laughs> My testing is progressing well, and I'll be sending measurements and imagery soon, but I, um, hmm, how should I put this? I may have already touched the transmitter with my bare hands. What's interesting is that it, it reacted to my touch in, in tone and in light, so what I'd love to do is repeat that little experiment and record it for you. So, I will await your next transmission, and we'll go from there. Come on, Becker. You can't leave me hanging. Hey, Ferg. I'm gonna do lake samples. Just letting you know. Heard anything from my wife yet? Other than chess moves, no, sir. Come on, Becker. 
I'm sorry, sir. I've compiled results on the methane sample. Okay, we pull them up on my screen, please. Thank you. Ferdinand, there are amino acids here. Yes, sir. This sample appears to confirm the hypotheses of Miller, Ure, and Horst. <laughs> this is like two steps away from life off Earth. I agree, sir. NASA will be very interested. Are you kidding me? Everyone on Earth is going to be very interested. That's amazing. Hmm. Sir, a new transmission from Mission Control. Becker again? I believe it's your wife, sir. Oh, finally. Pull it up, please. Got it, thank you. Hey, Roger. You're probably just waking up and have a lot of stuff to do, but, um, things have been pretty crazy. Apparently word got out that I have access to Mission Control and somebody hacked my home computer looking for information on your mission. They were controlling my webcam, Roger. Um, they, they don't know who it is yet. They're possibly Chinese hackers, but now the CIA's involved and Stewart's pissed at Becker and they're threatening to have me banned from mission control as if I'm not separated from you enough. I mean, he's just such a, no. He's your commanding officer. And I know that you're about to make incredible discoveries and all of that. I just, it's only been a year and a half and I'm scared. I feel like I'm writing letters to a dead guy. This message is solely for Abigail Nelson. Hi, Abby. I want you to take a good look. This is not a dead guy. At least not yet. Look, I, I know you're having a tough time. But I want you to hang in there, okay? NASA's there to take really good care of you and I promise you that Ferdinand's taking good care of me up here. I mean, we're, we're really onto something here. And I can't wait to find what I think we're going to find on Triton. And I can't wait to share it with you. So hang in there. All right. I've got to go into stasis. But if you're thinking of moving your night to H4, I think I'm going to have to move my rook to F6. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's what you're going to do. So we'll pick it up from there when I wake up. I love you. Hang in there. NASA has confirmed the advanced probe failed on arrival. No survey data has been collected. We will have to perform the orbital survey ourselves to locate the signal. Failed? What do you mean? What happened? Apparently a computer error, but Mission Control didn't send diagnostics. Currently, no survey data of Triton has been collected. We will have to perform the orbital survey ourselves to locate the signal. Great. How much, how much additional time is that? Unknown, sir. It could take upwards of 24 hours. And what's our window to Eris after we achieve orbit around Triton? 24 hours. Okay. Any word on the Chinese mission? Nothing official, sir. It is believed they may have arrived on Triton in the last seven days, but there have been no public announcements on their mission status. 
Any messages from my wife? It doesn't appear so, sir. Seriously, nothing? There are over 200 dispatches waiting for you, and none of them appear to be your wife. Although I may have made a mistake due to mislabeling. Unlikely. There is something else, sir. What's that? Commander, during stasis, there were some anomalies in the sphere's transmissions. What kind of anomalies? Momentary variations from the regular tonal pulse. NASA was notified of the anomalies and sent you a report. Okay, what about the other two signals? The other two signals have had no detectable variations. Was there anything interesting in the report? Possibly. At the time of the transmission anomalies, there was a significant rise in your brain activity similar to measurements found while dreaming in normal sleep, which isn't thought to be possible in stasis. No, it's not. Were you dreaming, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's just images, but nothing specific that I remember. I will log a report and send it to NASA. Right. Sir, is everything all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Becker says public reaction to the findings is ecstatic, yada yada. Renewed interest in the space program. Okay, that's good. Increased federal funding awarded to NASA. Oh good, maybe they'll send me a fruit basket or something. That would be improbable, Commander. Time and cost for cargo resupply at this distance is prohibitive. You're probably right, Bird. Hmm. Possible Chinese hacking of probe. That's interesting. Uh, okay, here we go. Transmitter anomaly report video relay. At approximately 3,400 hours side real time, 24 AU from Earth, we recorded an anomaly in the found transmitter signal. For about uh, 34 minutes, the signal just suddenly scrambled and began transmitting what, a, what what appears to be binary code. The variations would last just a few seconds and then it would revert back to the original signal. After 34 minutes, the anomalies just ceased. We've, uh, we've been trying to figure this out. We, we were trying to decode these binary clicks and we're still going at it, but we're not having any success. Now, whether this had anything to do with you touching that transmitter against protocol, we don't know. But I do know this, Secretary Stewart is livid and- I bet he is. Thank for you, now, Becker. I suggest not repeating your experiment until further notice. I'm also working on the binary codes and my background processes. Okay, still working on the signal anomalies. Every attempt to decipher it runs into variations. The code may not be binary. We observed increased brain activity associated with REM coinciding with the signal anomalies. Have you been dreaming, Commander Nelson? Please respond when you get this. Will do. How you feeling today, Ferdinand? Never better, sir. Okay. Let me know if you have any um, personal problems. What kind of problems, sir? You know, just anything unexpected in your processing. 
Of course, sir. Sir, can I inquire what you are doing? Why not? I don't believe this is following protocol, Commander. No, it's not, Ferd. But I am on a mission of discovery. And as current circumstances may prevent rebuttal from higher ranking personnel, I'm not that worried. All right, Ferdinand, record this. Did you get that, Ferd? Yes. Can I inquire what caused your reaction, sir? I don't know. Um, I, um, I saw images, um, just water and, and stars. Send it. Send the video now. Yes, Commander. Orbit achieved. Beginning orbital survey to locate signal source. Roger that. Commander, a new video transmission has just arrived. Okay, throw it up on the screen down here for me, please. Commander Nelson, uh, we just received word that there's been an accident with the Chinese mission. We're not sure what happened. But it's been confirmed that they experienced some sort of mechanical failure and it's believed that all three crew members are dead. Again, we don't know what happened. We're just waiting for some sort of an official statement here. Your orders are to proceed with the mission as planned. I reached out to Abigail and let her know that uh, you're okay, so. Good luck, Roger. Search time is limited, Commander. We must be en route to Eris within three hours, or we will miss our window. Hey, Commander Nelson. This is Neil. You don't say. What's the refueling process once we touch down? Are you serious? There is none, Neil. Gravity is less than 8% of Earth's. There's barely trace atmosphere. Escape velocity is super low. How do you not know this? Ferdinand doesn't tell me everything he knows. OK.
I don't know, Neil. We're getting pretty close to this impact crater. Yeah. Signal's coming from the crater. Probably 50 meters down. You should return for some climbing gear, sir. Thing is, I could probably just jump it in this gravity, you think? That is not advisable, sir. I think I can climb it without gear. How long until the window? 15 minutes until we need to launch, sir. Sir? Are you returning for gear? Negative, no. There's not enough time. I'm just gonna free solo it. I can't advise that, Commander. I know. Be cautious, sir. crater. Keep me posted on time. Your suit pressure appears to be stable. Time to departure is 11 minutes 47 seconds. some time. You know, it's really hard to get any traction on this ice with the low gravity. Could really use some crampons right about now. No, 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 no! Neil. Neil, I'll drop the sphere. I have to go back. How much time do we have left? Time to departure is 4 minutes 30 seconds. Copy that. Your 
pressure. It's a slow leak. Can you locate and patch it? No time. We have to get out of here. Otherwise, we'll never make it to Eris. This may be a bad time to say, I told you so. Time to departure is 3 minutes 30 seconds. You need to hurry back to the lander, sir. Charge the VTOLs! Trajectory now. I don't want to get caught chasing Eris' tail through the solar system. We don't have the time or the fuel for it. We gotta go now. Roger that, Captain. Displaying trajectory now. Okay, I found the second transmitter. And as you'll see here, got some similarities. So similar, similar shape, similar color. I was, all, I was also able, just able to get a small sample of ice near it because I nearly missed my exit. Um, so that's all I've got for now. You can expect the analysis results next transmission. Okay, Ferd. I want you to tell me what this is made of. Right away. You have a new transmission from Abigail. Oh, great. Uh, throw it up on the screen for me. Thank you. Hey, baby. Uh, Becker said you'd be coming out of stasis today, and I figured that by the time you get this, you've probably been awake for a couple hours. Um, he's letting me stick around here as long as I want, despite Stuart's wishes. I, uh, I think he feels sorry for me because I'm the astronaut widow. Um, it's been 50 months. That's a little over four years. I mean, a lot's been going on. My, my sister's been living with me for the last six months. Um, I thought I was up for a promotion that it didn't happen. Um, I don't know. I seem to even be having a hard time getting a speaking gig at the local college symposium anymore. But everyone wants an interview with the astronaut's wife. It's all anyone's interested in anymore. Uh, the the ball you found. I don't know all the details of it yet, but it's incredible. Roger, I'm scared. I keep having this dream that you uh, <laughs> you float off into space and mm, worse. They keep telling me you're okay, but they're not giving me full access anymore. And after what happened to the Chinese mission, I'm scared you're gonna die out there. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't be talking like this. I miss you a lot. <laughs> and, uh, Queenside Castle.
<sighs> Ferd, I'm gonna go check on the soup. Analysis on the ice sample from Triton is complete. It's mostly frozen water with some carbon dioxide and nitrogen ice crystals as well. Nice. There are other trace ices present. Ammonia, methane, carbon monoxide. Also chloride and magnesium, not unlike seawater on Earth. Yeah, very, very cold seawater. You didn't find any amino acids or proteins? None at all. But there are some anomalies in the radio survey I performed while you were on the surface. Do you have any readouts for me? You can access them on the main console. Thank you. I confirm the presence of a subterranean ocean beneath the ice crust of Triton, which averages one and a half kilometers thick. The anomalies I refer to are a number of dense protrusions that come near the ice crust, which could be mineral pinnacles. As you'll see on your screen, however, they appear to change position on subsequent scans. So what, just icebergs floating around? No, the protrusions stand out from the material around them. They're made of something different, with different densities and the movement didn't follow any distinguishable pattern that might indicate currents or convection. They seem random. Random. Ferdinand. Are you telling me there are fish down there? I would hesitate to suggest that, sir. They would be bigger than whales if they were life forms, but that is an unacceptable leap to make based on this data. It could just be some form of subsurface distortion, or globs of some compound being broken up by undersea geysers. I don't know, Ferdinand. After what happened to the Chinese mission, I'm scared you're gonna die out there. Incoming transmission from Mission Control, sir. Commander Nelson. I'm sending you this message because some of my people have done some analysis of their own, as well as viewed your touch experiment. I'm very concerned. I know you and NASA are advancing the future of mankind at a breathtaking pace, but it's important that in all the excitement of your discoveries, we don't lose our heads and do something that we're gonna regret. There could be any number of dangers from these extraterrestrial objects, and frankly, we don't know enough about them. We don't know where they came from or who sent them. And until we do know, I implore you to exercise the utmost caution in your handling of them and exposing them to any databases or feeds on board your craft. I want you to keep them contained and separate from you. As you can tell by the failed Chinese mission, this is a very delicate situation and we must proceed with the utmost caution. I will be your direct contact from this point forward as Becker seems to have made it a habit of making unauthorized messages. Until you leave Harris, and begin your return journey home, civilian personnel will no longer be admitted into mission control. That includes your wife, Commander. I know this may be difficult for you, but it is necessary. Messages to her will be relayed through us. Good luck on your journey to Eris, Commander. And be cautious. Tell me, 
What would possess you or anyone else to want to risk their life and fly around the cosmos in a tiny rocket ship looking for life? Well, that's easy. Sense of discovery, unexplored places, the advancement of scientific knowledge. No, that's not it. No? No. You're fighting for significance. You're a tiny speck in that enormous universe out there, and you're looking for man's place in it. You want meaning, just like everybody else. Well, if I'm looking for meaning, the universe is a great place to start. something a sphere captain yeah and something else Ferdinand, approach complete. I'm showing the Magellan's docking mechanism negative for lock at this time. Docking mechanism is ready, Commander. Go ahead. Ferd, I have a visual on the docking hatch. Lights are red. Can you run a systems check, please? It checked out affirmative, sir. Running again. Docking mechanism is ready. Proceed with the docking at will. Ferdinand, I have a close visual on the hatch. It appears to be closed, lock, with red lights. Sir? My systems show green clear for docking. Are you feeling all right, sir? I'm feeling fine, Ferd, and you? Are your systems functioning today? They certainly appear to be, sir. What was that? Ferd, I need you to clear your local memory stacks immediately. Clearing memory, sir. Shan Chun Chun. Captain, I'm getting a request from the Magellan to access lander systems for a firmware update. Denied. Isolate all channels, Neil. Roger that. Okay, Ferdinand, I need you to listen to my command carefully here. Okay, I want you to disable your ancillary memory stacks and then refresh your temp processing stack. Disabling ancillary memory. I am now functioning at 65% capacity. Now clear your local memory again. Clearing memory, sir. Memory cleared. All systems functioning, sir. Proceed with manual docking procedure. 
Neil, I want you to stay online and keep all channels isolated until you hear otherwise from me. Sir, once stocking is complete, the central computer is programmed to automatically override all lander systems. Sir, you may proceed with manual docking procedure. Proceeding. What the hell was that, Ferdinand? Captain Nelson, a transmission from NASA has arrived. No. No time for that now, Ferd. Close all open input channels immediately. No more system updates from NASA or anybody else. And no external programming changes, only mine. It's done. But, sir... You can let transmissions through, but nothing touches your firmware without my explicit authorization. And set up a new outfacing firewall and give me the key and only me. Yes, Commander. Ferd, I want you to run a deep systems check on your processing. But leave those ancillary memory stacks disabled until you have a direct order for me to enable them, okay? Confirmed, sir. Hey, Ferd. I got some samples that need biotesting. Immediately. <laughs> okay, for it, it's all yours. Yes, Commander. Beginning analysis. Well, thank you. Testing for purines. Purines are present. Testing for phosphate. Phosphate is present. Testing for dioxyribose. Come on, Ferd. Tell me what I want to know. Is this extraterrestrial life I'm looking at or what? Deoxyribose is present. <clears throat> Affirmative. Commander Nelson, the sample is biological in nature and appears to contain DNA. Thank you so much. We did it. We did it. We did it. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I mean it. Unbelievable. Hey, hey, we gotta tell Neil. We gotta tell Neil. Neil's not even real. What am I doing? I will attempt to break down the genetic code and perform bioassay tests. Should I transfer data to NASA now? No. No. No, I'm gonna be the one to break the big news to him. <laughs> oh, and Ferd, we're all messages we're going to send, they're going to be unencrypted. Got it? Sir, that's against protocol. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes! Mission Control, this is Commander Roger Nelson with the IC Magellan, coming to you with a slightly delayed broadcast somewhere in orbit around the dwarf planet Eris. Becker, I got a surprise for you. We are not alone. <laughs> Ferdinand's still working on the genetic breakdown, but my best guess is that it's some type of extremophile colonial bacterium. Maybe some form of biofilm, not sure, but it most certainly has DNA. <laughs> I'm gonna be sending pictures and data soon, but I had to, I just had to show this to you. Woo! How about that, Abigail? 
life in outer space? Thought about naming it after you, but I don't, I don't think it's, it's quite sexy enough. <laughs> so Becker, you can claim it. Thinking about calling it Bacterium Becker Caucus. Think about it. Um, all right, Abby. I'm so sorry that I've been gone for so long. But I want you to know I'm coming home. And if the spheres let me, I'm going to dream about you the whole way. I miss you so much. Hang in there. <clears throat> oh, and, um, Stuart. There was an incident with Ferdinand. You might want to check your firewall. In the meantime, I'll be taking total control of the ship. This is Commander Nelson, out. Handle that, Secretary Stewart. sexy, are you? You're not intelligent either. Which makes me wonder. Why did they want me to find you? Still no reply for mission control? It's been like four and a half hours. They're likely concerned with my system lockdown, sir. Between that and the time it takes for transmission, I expect the return message within the next hour. I bet it's gonna be a good one, too. <laughs> Stuart might have me court-martialed. Have you finished your systems check? Yes, sir, and found nothing out of order. Good. Because NASA had better figure this one out. I'm a little worried having my life depend on a 65% functioning computer. Actually, it's more like 45%, allowing for backup processes and redundant parallel computing. If you would allow me to just bring my peripherals back online. I'm sorry, Fur, but no. Ferdinand, what was that? An immense burst of radio signals, several million transmissions playing simultaneously through our comm system. The burst seems to have come from the spheres, but I am unsure how they gained access to our audio feed. Start analyzing this, Ferdinand. And I want you to make sure and log it in your data store. I want to know where this is coming from and what it is. Analyzing. 
There are millions of channels with billions of signals each and trillions of transmiss... I am unable... Sir, at this scale, I may not be able to log everything. I'm operating at only 65% and I can't... I've never encountered a data set this immense. Sir, I'm unable to... It's okay. I want you to log and analyze the first 1,000 transmissions. It appears to be radio chatter originating from multiple different locations in the galaxy, being relayed through the spheres and into our comm system. I can't interpret the chatter. How can you tell where it's coming from? There are codes embedded in each signal that gives relative distances from the center of the galaxy, along with vector information to pinpoint locations within a star system and exoplanet. I'm plotting these locations on the main screen now. There are other metadata associated with each signal, one of which may be a form of timestamp. If it is a timestamp, then all of these signals are nearly simultaneous and ongoing. Are you saying these messages are current? They're being transmitted right now? Either that, or they were all transmitted within moments of each other at some point in the distant past. The timestamp data point is a number, approximately 4.32 times 10 to the 17th power. All the transmissions are stamped with numbers close to that, and they are all incrementing at the same rate. These numbers, 4.32 times 10 to the 17th power, what significance does that hold? It is close to the age of the universe in seconds, the observable time elapsed since the Big Bang. But it is unlikely that interstellar signals would be based on Earth's seconds. But... If these others were anything like us humans, then a second would be the minimal amount of time significant to all of us, outside of precise measurements. An Earth year wouldn't be meaningful for... Earth, but a moment in time... That could be common across space the time it takes to take a breath for a heart to beat, to say a word. Perhaps, but under our current understanding of relativity, it's impossible for signals to be transmitted across space from those distant stars without travel times of many years. Unless they're using quantum entanglement and they're outputting the signal on our end in radio waves so we can hear them. That shouldn't be possible. <laughs> None of this should be possible, Ferdinand. I mean, I'm holding alien artifacts in my hands right now. None of this should be possible. This, this is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for, Fer. This is the moment all of mankind has been waiting for. We're not alone. We just haven't been able to hear. What are they saying, Ferdinand? Can you infer any patterns in the signals? Is it speech, machine language, text, music, what? It could be any assortment of each. The signals vary wildly. It would take about six years for me to run correlations between enough of these signals to begin piecing together an alphabet or speech pattern, if that's what they are. Perhaps if you brought my full memory back online. Not gonna happen, not now anyway. In any event, all the binary data seems to be encoded in a DNA codex. They communicate with DNA code? That's a lot of data.
What's happening, Ferdinand? A new signal, sir. From inside our solar system, but more distant than the others. A new arrival? No. It's coming from a dark body within the Oort cloud, well beyond the explored regions of the solar system, about a third of a light year from Earth. Wow. That's a long ways away. For how long would it take to get there? Approximately 38 years, provided the Magellan systems remained functional throughout. Shall I transmit our findings to NASA and prep the stasis box for the journey home, sir? Sure, yeah. You go ahead and do that. this far. There has to be a reason. Abigail, I can't imagine how difficult these last five years have been for you. And I'm so sorry I haven't been there. to move forward. It's hard to explain, but they're calling me, and I have to answer. There's something left for me to do out there, and I don't, I don't know what it is. I just know, or I believe, that the answer is somewhere in the Oort cloud. So that's where I'm headed. I'm following my own path. I know it's been so selfish of me to expect so much from you. So I want you to know that I am, I'm giving you the option to refuse orders. And I release you of any obligation you have towards me whatsoever so that you can live your life as you see fit. stasis, I, I wanted to make one last chess move. And it's gonna seem a little unorthodox. King G6. Sir, I believe that move places your king in check with her pawn and is illegal. You are correct. Vernon, I want you to send that message unencrypted, please. And then set a trajectory for the signal in the Oort cloud. Once you get us there as fast as possible. Sir, we're still awaiting NASA's reply, and it is... Ferdinand, I am the mission commander, and you have your orders. Into the work cloud. Commander Nelson, Secretary Stewart has brought me back in here to reason with you. Now, you need to return control of the Magellan to us or begin your return journey immediately. Well, I personally commend your scientific audacity, we need you to bring those beacons back for analysis. And for heaven's sake, Nelson, 
You won't survive. Your mission is complete, and we're worried. We're worried about your mental health. Your orders are to return home, Nelson, while you still can. You better come home, Roger Nelson. You hear me? Come home. Yeah. 